Welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Joe, and this is my household robot project. I'm trying to build a robot that'll be able to help out around the house. I started by trying to think of some unique job that it could do, like a robot vacuum. It vacuums the floor, and it does it well. But I realized that if I could make a chassis that was flexible enough, had enough range of motion, and was tall enough to see over counters, and all that kind of thing, and the computing power to handle it, it could do almost anything, as long as the software existed to make it do it. So I started on some concept art using Blender. Now, what I got turned out kind of creepy, but I asked my kids if they would like to draw what they think it ought to look like, and it came out with something cuter, and as you can see as you watch my video series, it did influence the design of the robot. But talk and dreaming is just dreaming until you put it into action. So I went and I got some motors and a single board computer called a Jetson that's meant for things like machine vision and AI and started trying to cobble something together. Now this is far from the final form of the robot. This is just a chassis to let me start developing the software. After some initial experiments, just getting things like machine vision packages to run, I needed to get something moving around. So I needed to develop a navigation system. Well, that led to sensors. How does it see its environment? At first I tried a two-dimensional LiDAR. It was a fairly cheap option with a nice clean output, and the robot wouldn't have to bump into things to actually find them. And at that time I was also struggling with getting precise movements out of the hoverboard motors I had chosen to use. After upgrading to some warm drive DC motors, I started to get some believable results. But now again I had to sense the environment around the robot, and landed on a time of flight camera, which I have mentioned many times in this series. To use the time of flight camera, at least the way I intended, I needed to know its exact position and orientation in the world. So I needed something to hold that time of flight camera ahead. And that's where I began learning how to do CAD work and 3D printing and things like that. I built the head and attached it to the body with a neck that is powered by a couple of servos, and voila! After that has been many, many, many painstaking hours of interpreting that image, cleaning it up, getting rid of the noise, learning how to make the robot actually track its physical position in space and its uh, direction it's pointed. I was very disappointed to find out that little magnetic compass chips don't work very well indoors, especially around a lot of electronics, like my desk. But now I finally had something working. It drove around, but struggled a lot. And last week we left off with me trying to figure out what that struggle was. In the simplest and, well, kind of most human terms, the robot was dizzy. Its perception of where it was in the world was delayed compared to the time of flight camera's output. And that's kind of due to my software structure I had. The way I was doing this was to have a program that was running the time of flight camera and another program that was interacting with all of the sensors and motors and everything and then there was a third program that would manage them every time the main program looped through it had to ask the body program what the sensors were doing and motors and such that would then ask the microcontrollers hey what are these sensors doing those microcontrollers would reply to the body program. The body program would reply to the main program. The main program would send that information on to the time of flight camera program. And the time of flight camera program would then send back all of that aggregate data in the form of a map. That was too long of a chain, too many delays. So this week I spent all my time taking the code that I'd written in Python for reading the sensors and controlling the motors and transferring it into my program written in C++ for the time of flight camera. And this wasn't just a matter of translation. Now I had to set it up for multi-threading. And of course, that brought some difficulties of its own. But I'm making very good progress. I wish I had more of an exciting update. I'm sure I will next time. But before then, I've got a new series I'm going to start. It was inspired by a comment left on one of my videos. My series I'm going to call How to Robot. And it will be a getting started with robotics series of videos from absolute ground zero no knowledge. This is how I would have started robotics back when I was a teenager if Arduinos had existed. We're going to build a robot with basic arts and crafts tools and get something running with no electronics experience, no programming experience. 
And along the way, we're going to begin learning programming, and we're going to begin learning about the electronics involved. I'm pretty excited about it. The very basic level of robotics is quite fun for me. So subscribe to my channel to see this series. I hope that it'll be helpful to many people and a lot of fun to do. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or comments about what I'm doing. I love interacting with people. Until next time, stay skibbity. Oh, Cap'n, no bus. I got skibbity. The rest of them I just yeet out randomly. Uh.